Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Welcome back. This is day three of your 12 month repeat and referral real estate lead cash flow machine. Oh my gosh, that title is officially too long. <laughs> uh, but this is day three, and this is where we're going to get to a suggested calendar of events. Now, we're going to go through a lot of ideas. But the ideas that we're going to share with you today are only only the surface of the content and the detail you get when you join Premier Coaching. Now, uh, the notes from today's show, as the notes are from every show that we do, are below. So all you've got to do is scroll below if you're on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you're listening to us, even on YouTube. Just scroll down, open it up. There are the notes, show description. And therein, you will also find a link to join Premier Coaching. Premier Coaching is the nation's number one selling coaching program with over 2,000 agents joining Premier Coaching in the last 12 months alone. So please do consider becoming a member of Premier Coaching. And I have to say, Premier Coaching has become somewhat of a, a movement, a community. It's something mm -hmm. that really is actually, it's uh, it's morphing into something we've always dreamed it would. So um, we'd love for you guys all to participate. We know you love this podcast. Tens of thousands of you listen to us every single day. So Premier Coaching is the next natural step for all of you. So scroll down, click the link. And of course, you can also go to premiercoaching.com. But really, the quick and easy button is just to scroll down, click the link, or just go to premiercoaching.com. And you can join Premier Coaching right now for free. And yes, that does include a daily semi-private coaching call. All right, Julie, before we get to part three in the first point, um, you had some agents in our coaching program and podcast listeners that you wanted to recognize. Yes, that's right. And this is related to the topic of part three. I call this the fun part of working with your past client center of influence so that you can get lots of repeat and referral business. And this is your schedule of events. So we'll talk about that in a second. Quick shout out. Speaking of events, what are some of you doing? Well, we have lots of examples from uh, past coaching clients, current coaching clients, lots of uh, action on the Facebook page here. From John Salmon, one of my elite coaching clients, he says uh, two things. Number one, our city does an annual vendor bazaar that has somewhere around 200 vendors. It's a big thing for our community. It benefits a charity. I'll be doing a drawing for a free seller side listing. Seller only has to pay for the buyer agent commission. During the bazaar, I'll be using my booth to answer questions to anyone that wants to know more about our local real estate market. And number two, his brokerage is him and his wife right now. Their company Christmas party will be them inviting their center of influence as well as some of those vendors from the other event that we work with, lenders, contractors, title company, et cetera. So those are two events that John's got planned. And then Aaron Wild, another coaching client, says, I'm in the middle of planning a trick or trunk pumpkin patch. My daughter is a Halloween baby, so she's keeping me accountable. Kids are always good at that, right? <laughs> That's great. Um, let's see. A couple of people said they're really looking forward to this podcast. So Marilyn Hodgson, you are one of those. And let's see. From a coaching call today, uh, Gray out in um, Ocean City, New Jersey, is doing a twist on the pumpkin patch. He's doing a scarecrow party for his neighborhood at his house. So basically, you bring your own scarecrow clothes he provides the stuffing. He's getting a bunch of hay or straw, and they're going to do a neighborhood scarecrow making party. And then he said that this becomes a thing in their neighborhood, that a bunch of scarecrows are all over the neighborhood celebrating harvest and fall and autumn. And I thought that was a really great idea because who doesn't have old clothes laying around that you could turn into a scarecrow and make it fun? Absolutely. Well, the point is, is to make it fun, right? The point exactly. is, is to be yourself doing what you love to do, and being around people that you actually like, you know? <laughs> That's right. And here's the thing. When you do events like this, none of what we just talked about from any of these coaching clients costs very much money. Mm -mm. In fact, you could probably do everything mentioned for free or real close to free. So this is really effective for connecting you to multiple past clients and people in your center of influence all on one day at one event. And it is important to recognize that we're not, and we won't be in any of these examples, be telling you to plaster everyone with your business card or put your real estate sign up everywhere no. or somehow make this into a big, you know, uh, commercial, uh, you know, exploitation. That's not at all what we're suggesting you to do. 
Well, how can you then generate leads off these ideas? Make sure you're paying very close attention. So we've created this list in sequential order, and we're going to start with uh, January. Of course, you can take these ideas in any order. Some of them are going to be seasonal specific or time of year specific. Not all of them, Not yeah. all of them, right. Mm -hmm. And we're going to sprinkle in lots of ideas and other uh, types of uh, concepts. I, actually, I want to, something just popped in my head. Yeah. Um, so if you, for example, were in, in a market where there, say, are occasionally hurricanes or there's other types of uh, weather issues in where Julie and I are originally from in Ohio, there'd be a lot of snow, just things of that mm -hmm. nature. You can also do things that are going to be uh, timely for those weather events. And I remember very clearly we had a coaching client that was in, I think it was Big Bear, California. Mm -hmm. And this was years and years ago. But the area was essentially being plagued with fires. And as a result, the whole community was under threat of fire, That so much so that they closed the road going to Big Bear. Now you could, you know, you could choose to leave or stay, and he chose to stay. And fortunately, the fires didn't really affect most of the community. But what he was able to do is communicate out of the fire zone, you know, a.k.a. his hometown, and let everyone know, his neighbors. He was doing little press releases, just letting everyone know that their, uh, the community was fine, and then going to the extent of going by people's houses and taking pictures. Now, after that, um, what happened was within a short, maybe a year or less, he became the number one listing agent yeah. in that entire community because people were so grateful for the service he provided. And they were so, you know, that's that's really ultimately where all these types of feelings um, and all these types of event, events lead to, is people seeing that you are a person of contribution, that you're here to help other people, mm -hmm. and uh, no other better way than to start out with a January Happy New Year's mm -hmm. party, Julie. That's right, so in January, for example, a Happy New Year's party or a how to winterize your home video message. Uh, before we do this, I just wanted to make a quick message. I had a note up here. Mm. Um, there are several categories of events, events that you create, okay, then event that you create and promote and manage yourself. You can have events that you sponsor, which are created by somebody else, and then smaller get togethers with select groups from your list. So all of these things can be small, medium, or large. Well, what matters is that you are there physically actually yes. participating. That's what matters most. You're not going to hire a VA to do your center of influence event. Well, what <laughs> agents are going to do tragically is they're going to spot. And we made this mistake when we sure. sold real estate. I mean, sure, we, were, we would sponsor the local baseball teams and whatever. We never got any business from it. They always sent us a nice picture. We pay for their, you know, yeah. at the end of the season, them going to get, but there was never a single referral. Had we actually gone we there. We should have gone and then and, it would have We would have. Yeah. Or I'm thinking Good of first, point. Or people that sponsor events and they put their, logo up on some sort of big banner, you know, announcing something or another, you're not going to get any business from that. You're only going to get business from sponsoring things when you go there actually and uh, really participate. Let people get to know you as a human and they're going to want to do business with you. That's right. So good points. Um, January, your happy new year party or how to winterize your home. If you're having a blizzard where you live, make a video about preparedness, emergency systems, where to get the best snowblower. You could have a, an event about that and have vendors before there was uh, something happening. And in fact, you reminded me of a podcast you were talking about our client in Big Bear. Um, we did do a podcast called What to Do When Disaster Strikes, yep. which had a big drill down on this. I think there were 12 points on how to actually do an event like that. Okay, then that leads us to February. Use red hot candies for a pop by gift, which might say, it might be cold outside, but the market is red hot. Or I love, get it with the hearts, referral business. Using heart candy or heart candles, you can do use these for door knocking, lead follow-up, open house giveaways, at the closing table. Bring them to new build reps. Ask for their resale referrals. Now, it's important to understand that these little tchotchke ideas, they are in addition to doing the proactive lead generation, in addition to the actual uh, phone calls, whereas this last example, Julie, uh, well, basically all these examples, you will be making contacts because these are yes. all live events, but don't think these live events by themselves will replace actually doing the proactive lead generation. You have to talk to people actually doing the phone calls on a regular basis. Remember yesterday, we told you to make five contacts every single day. So if you're having to choose between doing events and making the five contacts a day, if you can't do both, do the five contacts a day. Obviously, the killer app is going to be doing the five contacts a day. And then you choosing which of these ideas might be most appropriate for your time of year. Most of our top clients, they do events primarily towards the end of the year. They're slower. People, you know, the businesses are slower unless you're in a vacation market. Generally speaking, people are in a better mood, you know, not sure. always. Yeah. But it's people are a little bit more, you know, they're operating at a slower pace. And it's a better time to maybe 
I think connect, connect with people because they're not boiling at the highest temperature like they would be, say, during August when, you know, they're trying to fit in the sure. last minute vacation and get the kids back to school. We're giving you lots of ideas so that you can decide to do once a month, once a quarter, maybe just fourth quarter, as Tim mentioned. We're giving you some options here. And again, these can be big or small or medium sized things. Okay, number three, we said instead of a specific month, spring. Tax time, free CMAs. You could send closing statements to last year's clients. Those are required for your taxes. You can do one video email offering an updated market analysis and follow up with follow up with phone contact. Okay, now here's what Julie and I did. We would offer, is this is when we lived in New Albany Country Club, we would offer to all the community members, all the people living there, a CMA and a little instruction video on how to go about um, contesting their property taxes. Which is easy to get from your treasurer's website. Right, and surprise, surprise, if you all should be doing this as well. If you just fill out the form yourself and you basically back it up with a CMA, nine times out of 10, you're going to have your property t- uh, taxes adjusted not in a meaningful way usually, but by a few hundred bucks. Sometimes, yeah. And if, if you're in a state like Texas where property taxes are, you know, a lot, that's going to have a meaningful impact on people's actual bottom line. But we took listings when we were New Albany Country Club just because we were offering to provide that service for our prospective folks for free. It was astonishing because what are you doing? Somebody's thinking about putting their house for sale in the summer. They know that their property tax bill is too high. They know that's going to be detrimental to actually, you know, getting a potential buyer to purchase it. Why are the property taxes on this house more than the property taxes on this house kind of thing? So we would help them contest the taxes, get the taxes lower in some cases, and then obviously they would want to list that house with us. We earned the right to be their trusted listing agent. Well, some of you guys don't talk to your database because you're not sure what to give of service, how to be of service. Well, that's huge. You're literally putting money in their pocket. Well, we'd use that too, Julie. We had, oh, here's an advanced idea for you guys. There was a local, if you have this advantage in your marketplace, you want to exploit this. There was a local newspaper. I don't remember the name of it, but it was just some community newspaper that was hung on either people's doors or doorsteps or hung on the mailbox and the plate, you know, the whole thing. And this was in a clear uh, bag. And it was the local high school sports scores and local business coupons and all those types of things. If you have a thing like this, you definitely want to use it. Well, Julie and I saw that this idea for helping folks understand how to lower their property taxes was a home run. So we took it to the next level. We had a bright fluorescent. It was either red, pink, or orange um, a flyer made, basically. And then we would, uh, they, the newspaper would print them and they were happy with that because they could like, you know, they were charging us like a nickel to print it and then uh, insert it was like another two cents. So what they did is when the little local paper boys would get their stack of bags, their stack of papers and all these fluorescent uh, flyers is they always wrapped the newspaper in our flyers. So when you drove around the community, what you saw everywhere was our hideously bright, you know, offer to help people lower their- Eye-catching, you would say. Eye-catching, exactly. Our fluorescent flyers were everywhere. And that did draw attention to us for a really ridiculously low, low amount of money. Absolutely. And all of these things you guys can do too. All right. Also in spring or really any time for this one, this is one of my favorite ones. Buy or sell with me, ado- <clears throat> excuse me, adopt a pet for free promotion. Work with your local ASPCA, that's your humane society or a local shelter for a specific format. They are often going to promote this for you with press releases or events like what PetSmart does for their adoption days. You can promote your event via video sent to your database, individual phone calls, of course, recurring theme, to invite your people, and of course, post on social media. Note to self, press releases are easy to get published. This is the type of event that gets tons of media attention. Again, buy or sell with me, adopt a pet for free. Uh, One of our coaching clients did this recently. She had a huge turnout. It was a very happy, fun event and pretty easy to put together. And the Humane Society will oftentimes do the actual press release stuff for you. Yeah, they're all organized. This is not a new idea for them. Exactly. And all you're doing is picking up the adoption fees if someone buys or sells with you. I mean, no brainer, right? Oh, and that is something you should be adding to your listing presentation. That is something that we uh, will strongly suggest you include in your pre-listing pack. And all this is obviously part of Premier Coaching. Point number five. Well, you know, what happened when we did that is, and we, you know, sent it out to our list and communicated, we got people who decided to list with us just because we were pet people. Totally. Like they, you know, they resonated with you. You were obviously amiable, pet friendly. And that was like the number one reason that they decided to list with us. It was well, amazing. I'll, I don't know. I'll take that memory a little bit farther. Maybe yeah. you remember this. We had asked the permission of the local Columbus, the Humane Society, right, to do this. 
But they had so many people that were reacting to it. They were like getting a little worried. They didn't understand what the hell was going on, even yeah. though they Do we had, have enough pets. Exactly. Well, it wasn't that they were worried that, you know, somehow they just weren't, they didn't feel like they're in control enough of, yeah, of the marketing that thing. we were doing on their behalf. And so Bill, if you remember correctly, he was on mm -hmm. the board, was mm -hmm. a client of ours. And so he got us formalized a permission with a caveat that we had to put a asterisk on there that it has upon approval of the Humane Society. In other words, sure. they didn't want any Tom, Dick, or Harry walking and then adopting a pet that had to go to a you know an owner that's going to obviously take care of the animal. So that was the only thing the Humane well, Society. And that was, was just one about. form, and yeah. that's fine. It just said that if you ever want to give up your pet, you give it back to the Humane Society. Yep. Stuff like that. That's very reasonable. Okay, so May, also one of my favorite events, Memorial Day parades, especially if you're in a military or a historic town, participate in existing parades and give out candy or water bottles or American flags. You can create a Facebook Live session or a video about VA loans and how they work. You can do all kinds of things with this Memorial Day business. Um, door knock your neighborhood and door knock prior to your open houses with red, white, and blue candy and flags. Have fun with it. This is one of those weekends where everybody is out it's warm out. People are celebrating. It kind of kicks off the beginning of summer. So you can really take that as far as you want. But let's be honest, that is true in most of the country, but not all of the country. True. Most of the country still has parades. Most of the country was going to be, you know, more traditional and those sure. types of, mm -hmm. so adjust accordingly. Point number six. Okay. In the summer, but you can also do it anytime. Paper and pancakes, paper shredding party. I've had several coaching clients do this. This is not something we ever did, but I think it's great. So you guys can see that what we're doing is we're attaching the, like, this would be a June idea, for example. The last one was a May idea. Again, our notes are below, so just scroll below. Yes. So what is a paper and pancakes paper shredding party? Sounds you, messy. It does, right? <laughs> I, and I, I always was skeptical of this, but our coaching clients have had such a great um, response to it. You rent a shredding truck. Yes, there are such things as a paper shredding truck and a pancake food truck. And you host a shredding party, either at your office or an event center or a clubhouse. Maybe your neighborhood has a clubhouse, something like that. This has a surprising turnout and doesn't cost much. So what are you shredding? Everybody has files and old stuff they have to get rid of, bills and, you know, account statements and whatever. So, and people keep that in boxes and boxes and boxes. Then you make it fun with the pancakes. Now, you can combine ideas. And this is going, I know I'm going to trample a little bit on your okay. idea that's coming up for uh, October. But you could, for example, do the paper, what is it again? The paper, paper and pancakes. pancakes, paper shredding thing. Why don't you combine that with an American Red Cross blood drive? We're going to describe how to do that for the October. Coming for, up. For coming up. So maybe you combine ideas. Maybe you get many different uh, reasons why someone's going to participate in your particular charity. And so again, stay tuned. We're about to give you yes. the Red Cross idea. Okay. Uh, number seven, we talked about the summer tornado, hurricane, fire season uh, at the top of the podcast. You talked about that. Okay. Number eight, summer or fall, work with the American Red Cross for a blood drive. They will bring the blood mobile to your location. You do not have to pay for that. And they will even prospect for you. So you have maximum turnout. The uh, American Red Cross keeps track of anybody in your zip code, in your town, your area that has ever given blood to them and will actually prospect to get them to come to you. And they're quite aggressive if you've ever donated blood to the American Red Cross. Yeah, they are quite they aggressive, track. especially if you have a uh, rare blood type. They will call you all the damn time. <laughs> How might you know this? Yes, exactly, because <laughs> exactly. I have a rare blood type. But here, here's the thing that's interesting from all of this is that, again, combine ideas. And for example, um, you might want to do Julie's point number nine here in combination with American Red Cross Blood Drive. That's what we used to do. Julie, point number nine. Yes. Another favorite event, fall or October, Pumpkin Fest. You can host it at your home, clubhouse, school, library, or recreation center. Buy your pumpkins wholesale in September and invite your neighborhood, your clubs, your community, your past clients, your centers of influence, professional centers of influence. This is a super popular event. Get apple cider or partner with your local coffee house or Starbucks to cater the event. And Starbucks will cater events. The managers all have little slush funds mm -hmm. they can use for contributing to local events every year. They love stuff like that. They do. Well, that was one of the ways that we got referrals from Tristan too. Exactly. Uh, okay. Who managed our local Starbucks. Yes. Now, here's another thing. I've been working with uh, some of our coaches and coaching clients. Think about who in your database has something like a bakery, a coffee shop, or other business that you can support. There was a conversation today with one of the coaches about uh, how to decide what to do for closing gifts. Look at your own database. Who has something that you can help them out with and then help your clients? So you can certainly use some of that for your pumpkin fest ideas. Now, this is a great example 
of an event that usually starts out kind of small. First time agents do this is usually in their neighborhood. We did in our front yard. We, we did in our front yard for two or three years, and then it got so big we had to put it at the elementary school. So don't be surprised if this really gets some legs and takes off. But again, don't be intimidated by these ideas, by the cost or by the engineering of it. You can start small. And we were just passing them. I mean, how did we do the commerce on that end of it? How did, did they buy them or we didn't give them away? Did um, we? I don't we remember. bought them wholesale and then we sold them. I think we bought them for like two bucks a piece and sold them for five bucks a piece. You can't sell them for more than what they can get at the grocery store. So know what's going on. But we donated the money. But we donated the money to a charity. And then we had people from the charity volunteer. We did different things. One of them was with Westerville Symphony. One was with the, with the um, Humane Society. So that was combining things. So we had the Blood Mobile, the Pumpkin Fest, and the donation. Well, let's paint the picture, right? So we would uh, go to the local, it was New Albany uh, Elementary School. And the principal was totally into the idea. She loved it. Big parking lot. Um, we connected her with American Red Cross. American Red Cross is now doing a blood drive there. What we didn't know <laughs> what was, I'll never forget this, was how unbelievably organized American Red Cross was. They are like military level precision. Well, but remember, they show up in disasters, so they know how to do this stuff. And they showed up. They had the outside thing, but nope, the principal gave them permission to set up the, the uh, gurneys inside the classrooms. <laughs> and so, again, we underestimated how amazing of a job they would do. So Julie and I get to, uh, you know, we had the pumpkins delivered. We put, we got there and with a whole bunch of volunteers, put all the pumpkins out everywhere. And we bought, I don't even remember that year, 300, 400 pumpkins. And we thought for sure these would last the entire day. <laughs> not only did they yeah. not last the entire day, something really sad happened at the end of the day. You remember? When we ran out? Yeah, when we ran out. So this big tour bus... For, oh, yeah, uh, from true. a local, um, uh, what would it's you like call it? like a nursing home or something. Nursing home, yeah, showed up. And all these re you know, older people come piling out of the nursing home looking to get their pumpkin. All the damn pumpkins had sold. They got there at like 1 o'clock. And by that time, we'd been completely sold out. And just for those of you who are following along, we would donate our – we would make no money on it. We weren't even getting our money back. Who cares? Less it's all than a thousand bucks. And we are donating that money and donating everything that went along with it. You can, again, combine ideas to get people to really want to pay attention. But all of these things in combination, think about what it's going to do for your business. You obviously are giving back directly to the community. Um, imagine if your competitor does this very idea and how, how that's going to make them look in your neighborhood. I mean, you that's beyond yeah. um, a bunch of marketing and branding, isn't it? Okay, now if you combine that, with, I, now you got the American Cross there, Red Cross. They're now doing promo, they're doing a PR for you. They're calling in the community. They're you know firing all their cannons to promote this particular event, which is also going to promote you. You're going to be in the local newspaper. Maybe the local TV station will come mm -hmm. out. Now you can pull in other types of ideas and have this be an absolute home run where you're at the center of it. You're at the core. You're the one that organized it. You will get business forever just from the very fact that that one event per year is such a magnet for people to really celebrate the holidays or celebrate really the start of the holidays yeah. in the, you know, obviously well, in the fall. Well, people love it too, especially if you live in an area that has messy weather because parents hate, you know, you're thinking about kids got to get a pumpkin. Do I really want to go to a muddy pumpkin patch in the middle of nowhere when I can just go to the neighborhood? Let's do that. We didn't do this, but we should have had the, have the uh, Humane Society there for a pet. hundred uh, percent could do that. Yeah, you could do a petting zoo. You could do all kinds of fun stuff. So I'm going to tell you guys a funny Tim and Julie story. So we've been married for 32 years this year, which I can't believe. Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> so when we first got married uh, and, you know, we were, you know, poor people living in an apartment and had no money and we're 50,000 in debt from student loans. Well, we decided we wanted to adopt a cat. Mm -hmm. okay, might as so well get a cat for the apartment. Might as well get the cat for the apartment to kill the occasional roach that was meandering about, right? Hey, we had some big spiders there. Yeah, true story. So anyway, we would uh, we went to the Humane Society, and they were doing some sort of you know cat drive something or another at, at some pet food store. So we went there. I'll never forget this. It's towards the end of the day. Towards the end of the day. And the only cats left were kind of the scruffy, you know, mangy-looking <laughs> cats. In other words, cats that were perfect for us. The cat rejects. And, and they, we, they must have seen us in the parking lot because they were like saying, sucker alert. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those two. And so we walked in. They say, you you guys have hit the lot, the, the cat lottery. And these, you know, they're kittens, so they're really cute. But, you know, mangy kittens. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, they said two for one day. So, you know, Julie, of course, and they put one cat in Julie's hand, one cat in my hand. And guess what we ended up with? Like three cats. Four. Okay, four, four cats. Yeah. All right. I even forgot one. Yep. So we ended up with four cats. And it turns out those things live pretty much forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, so be careful with your, your yeah. events. Well, anyway, so yeah, we have third. Now, if we have, we joke with Zoe about getting a cat. 
There'll be no such thing as an indoor cat. No, <laughs> no. that's right. She's making friends with the neighbors outside. That's cat, right. Yes. Well, so yes, be careful where these things can go because the next <laughs> thing you know, you might have a lot of cats. There you go. See, we're tra- we have your back. All right. Uh, next, we're on to November, Thanksgiving time. Host a Thanksgiving food drive. You can promote this on your website, Facebook page, Instagram, etc. Submit press releases to your local media. Partner with an existing food pantry or church to get additional support. Maybe somebody else is already doing this that you can partner with. You could also have a Friendsgiving event at your home or a restaurant. Maybe you invite your top 20 or 30 past clients and people in your sphere and do a little Friendsgiving. Ask your local elementary school, churches, synagogues for families in need and sponsor them with a surprise turkey dinner. There's lots of directions you can go in November with Thanksgiving. In fact, you could do all three of those things. You could do a food drive. You could do the Friendsgiving for some of your top people on your database. And you could also adopt uh, families through churches or through school. All right. So when we lived in New Albany Country Club, this is where we really kind of were hitting our stride with all this sort of community type stuff. Obviously, these are all of our reference points, right? Well, <laughs> I mean, fun we, too. we had a house that was large enough that we could do events like this. Do you remember the year that we did the canned food drive and then there was a palm reader in the basement, the whole nine yards? Do you remember <laughs> yes. that? That was insane. How many Fortune people teller. showed up? Yep. It was insane. It was great. The house was yep. like 5,500 square feet, and it was full. Packed, and that's three levels, yeah. And, and people were crashing it, too. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't mind saying we did not invite a lot of the local agents, but they all showed up. No, because there were a lot <laughs> in our neighborhood. Yeah. They were. But we also, you know, we used directional signs. And it was fine. It was you know, great. It was fun. You're supposed to have fun with these things. Be yourself, okay? We're not telling you invite a bunch of people and then grill them for when they're going to sell. But what was the draw to that? Obviously, there was the thing going on in the basement. There was a line for people to have their palms read or whatever. I think that one was a food drive. We did one after 9-11 that was a patriotic one. Mm -hmm. Um, We did food drives, toy drives. Actually, that brings us to the next one. On that one in particular, I remember we had so many canned goods Mm -hmm. that we had. We figured, well, we'll just throw them in the back of our whatever we had. had But we had so many, we had to go and rent a truck. And I remember the church that said they wanted all the canned goods canned food didn't want it all because it was too much for them to handle yeah people love to give especially around the holidays you are giving back to your community so uh speaking of holidays december christmas holiday toy drive partner with your police or fire departments for toy pickup usually these are very organized and already ongoing or have your past clients in sphere uh, your contacts drop off toys at your home or your office Send thank you cards, highlight them on Facebook, have your local paper do a feature story on you and on them. So the toy drive can be very popular. And again, you don't have to do the, organize it all by yourself. You could just attach to, um, you know, the fire department or there's lots of different places that do But this. there's iterations on that as well. Yeah. For example, you could go into the local, well, Toys R Us is out of business, but you could go to the local toy store. You go to Target. Yeah, you know. Target, or I mean, some cases, if you're living in a more rural part of the country, it might be like a Walmart. And go up to the layaway desk. Yes, there's layaway desk. And this ask, is a great thing to do. And ask them uh, for, tell them you'd like to pay off people's layaways. There's going to be people there who have been paying for their little kids' Christmas presents all year, and there's still a balance on the on the account. And, and sometimes it's like 20 bucks. Well, I mean, what we did, and we haven't done this, I mean, since we moved to Puerto Rico, but we probably should again, mm-hmm. is we'd walk into the local, wherever it was, it was Toys R Us back then, and we would ver- be very specific. I, you're the one that set it up, right? Kids less than five years old yeah you uh, um you have to talk to the manager because they keep track of this stuff they can pull up the lists we said we wanted to do toys only i think we did 12 years old and younger toys only so you're not going to be paying off like somebody's big screen tv for you know or whatever or whatever um and balances that were like less than 50 dollars because you figure those are people that are struggling the most if they if they have something on layaway for 50 i think it was a hundred dollars and i think we yeah. started out by saying that we will uh contribute uh twenty five hundred dollars yes and that was what it was. And, and we asked them in advance for those were our criteria and why we wanted to do that. When it would be Secret Santa for these families, pick out how many people, you know, they know some of these people. And they had a list and we showed up and they were all organized and they had it all compiled and we just paid for it and we we're done with that. So like if you're in a rural, more rural part of the country, you could do that with local churches and whatnot. People yes. are, the, the thing you got to remember is the, you know, unfortunately society isn't set up for people to make direct contributions like that. They all want you to go through some kind of funnel. So that's the reason if you're going to be paying off people's layaways, uh, kids, you know, presents for children, you have to call ahead of time, listen to what Julie said yeah. and tell the manager the way, exactly what you're wanting to do. But then now, you know where the money's going too. Now we would do this every year and when we walk in, Again, the manager, it was like, I remember one year in particular, maybe uh, one of the last years we did it in uh, Texas, 
She had like four people had already organized it all. And as soon as we put the credit card down and said, Kate, go at it, they just started running it through, running it through. Now, mm-hmm. Julie and I did not stick around. And like she wanted to, it was it was a he actually, he wanted to announce it to the store and make a big thing of it, big, a big press thing. Tim and Julie Harris donated this and the other thing. We didn't want any part of it. We didn't want to, we, uh, we don't believe that giving and asking for recognition for having given is the right way to give. That's just our personal beliefs. But that's how we've always operated. Mm-hmm. If you give and you give and you give and you're always asking for, you know, some sort of you know virtue signal from society that you're a good person, that's kind of an opposite of really what the intent of giving is. I'm not, I'm not sure where that thought came from, but it's something that Julie and I have always been in alignment with. So in that particular case, we would give anonymously. We've done that through churches and we've done that through other things as well. We don't want the recognition that's out we of just al- like to do it. That's out of alignment with, in our minds, the whole point of giving. Now, that said, if you're running a business and you want to actually get some sort of, you know, social benefit from having done something like that, go for it. It is actually, I think, um, it's almost out of alignment with your with your mission to be a successful entrepreneur. If, if you're going to you make. Don't. If you're going to make contributions like that, if you don't ask for overt credit for it. Mm-hmm. So if you're doing it personally, consider not taking credit. It's up to you. That's your value set. But if you're doing it professionally, then definitely take credit for it and take as much free, you know, accolades as you possibly can muster. Yes. And a version of that, I don't know if you remember this, but we also uh, paid for some pet surgeries where the yeah. person was having to make a decision if they were going to have to break up with their pet and put them down based on the cost of a surgery. That's another one of my favorite secret Santa moves. Well, we did that. You, Okay, I mean, since we're down this rabbit hole, those of <laughs> you guys are still listening, we'll tell you some other zany things that Julie and I used to do. So we used to do uh, something with French bull. We, have, we love oh, French yes, bulldogs. Frenchies. So what we would do, this is all before Zoe was born. We would, uh, during the holidays especially, volunteer to do French bulldog rescues. And what a rescue was, those of you who are involved in pet charities, you'll know. So the owner can't take care of the animal for whatever reason. And the choice is basically to drop the, ca- the animal off at the Humane Society. You know, basically they can't deal with the animal anymore. And in most cases, the animal would be, you know, puts to sleep because a lot of these animals that were neglected are really in need of medical Tough care, man- mangy. So a French bulldog rescue, they would contact French bulldog rescue and then French bulldog rescue would do a little intake thing, and they would send Julie and I to go get the animal. And we did this all over Nevada when we lived there, all over Southern California. We drove to Arizona. We did this every holiday season. We did some season. in Texas, too. We did. Yeah, that's right. We did, didn't we? drove to mm-hmm. Dallas. And we would go and we'd get the animals from a different people's houses. And for the most part, the animals weren't overtly abused, but the people had just fallen on hard times. And they were really sad to see the animals go. More neglected than abused, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And then we would take the animals and sometimes they'd stay with us for, you know, no time at all. And we'd just take them. We are like underground railroad for, you know, these poor dogs. We were the halfway house. <laughs> That's right. And sometimes we'd take them right to their foster or other times we would have to keep them for a little while. We'd kind of get them back on all four paws, as it were, mm-hmm. and then take them to their foster. So we weren't fostering. We were just transpoing. Yeah, we were part of the relay. And so if, if there's any Frenchie listeners out there, French Bulldog Rescue Network, I think, dot org. But you know, there's a lot of organizations, Golden Endings for Golden Retrievers. There's all kinds of different ways that you can be in, involved. This kind of plays into the buy or sell with me, adopt a pet for free thing. If I were selling real estate full time, I would probably be sponsoring a French Bulldog meetup at the park every other weekend or something like that. You can involve yourself lots of different ways. The point is that people get to know you as you first. They resonate with you. They know, love, and trust you. And then when it comes to talk about real estate, you're going to be the obvious person they already know who's in real estate. They just met you through something like French Bulldog Rescue Network. They trust you already because of that. And then that leads to a real estate conversation. A couple more, and then we'll wrap up. Um, The next one is the wrapping paper project. We do this with our um, premier coaching clients, our elite coaching clients. This is one of the most popular projects uh, for our coaching clients. And I have many examples of listings that have resulted. You go to your dollar store, you get a whole bunch of wrapping paper. It's always on sale, like starting in November or so. Well, hold on. So you can actually buy wholesale wrapping paper online. You don't have to go to the dollar store. So just go to Google, do a quick search, and you can find there's so many different places that will sell you really way too much wrapping paper. Get it Uh, for cheap. Get it for cheap. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So you got your wrapping paper all set up and then you have, you can create a little tag that says, don't get wrapped up with the wrong real estate agent. That goes on the card. You attach it with a simple roll of wrapping paper. Now, 
Our coaching clients have taken this to the next level. They post it every year. It's really fun. They can add gift stickers wrapped with a ribbon that says, stick with me for all of your real estate needs. They add a candy cane, some ribbon. You're all set to deliver to your neighborhood, your farm. Use it open houses. Drop to past clients as a pop-by. Um, you can do it as lead follow-up. You can take them to closings. You take them to expireds for sale by owners. You can use them in so, diff so many different ways. I'll tell you a quick funny story about this. You were talking about don't just do these things and not show up. I had a, a coaching client text me that said, I did the wrapping paper project. I got a hundred of them out over the weekend. I drove past, I drove past in my car and I threw them on the, on the porch. I'm like, you're missing the point. You're supposed to be having conversations, not just winging wrapping paper. Okay? Well, but Julie, that's so, not the funnier story. And we've heard this iteration. We've heard versions of this so many times. You're going to tell the raccoon story. Oh my God. It's so freaking funny. <laughs> it's well, I mean this, but how many times in the last 20 years of us coaching and selling Once. real estate have we heard this? About the drop and run idea. Yeah, the right? drop and run. Oh, you're going to deliver pumpkin pies for the holidays. Go you. And so what agents do, the ones that are, you know, 100% not doing it correctly, <laughs> they'll drop the pumpkin pies off at people's doors. They don't knock. They don't say hi. They don't connect. They missed the point entirely. Right. So they leave them there in a box, a nice little card. Maybe they've even taken to the point of putting a little bow on it the whole nine yards. Well, I mean, you could finish the story. <laughs> And so what happens the next day? I would call this reverse prospecting. Okay, you you want your people to call you, right? But you don't want them to call you irate because the raccoons got into the pumpkin pie that you dropped off, didn't let them know it was there, smeared it all over their front porch for them to have to pick up on the morning when they're getting, taking their kid to school. Well, so No the, bueno. <laughs> another version of that, and we've heard this a bunch of times too, is that you're going to be delivering your pumpkin pies. This is the reason the phone call matters, right? You're going to be delivering your pumpkin pie, and then you're going to knock on the door, give it to the seller, and then you're going to realize that there's three or four other agents that have also right. dropped off pumpkin pies the same day. But actually, I'm going to tell you guys a funny Julie story that, oh, no. that she, you just kind of triggered me about. So Julie, and it was like our first year in business, she was showing homes to a buyer, and there was a big old sign in the door that says, do not let the cat out. Well, as we as we regretfully informed you, we had a bunch of cats. And so we understood the importance of not letting the cat out. And so what Julie did is she thought, she walks out and she sees this big ass, mangy, you know, nasty, whatever the hell it is, cat. And she she's like, oh my gosh, somehow this cat got left out. And so she grabs hold of this cat, tries to rip her arm off, and she throws this cat out of this Back happened. in the house. I remember when we got the call. She throws this big ass, ornery, freaking <laughs> cheetah sized cat back in the house. And then. And then, so, uh, so the listing agent, remember, I was on the buyer side here, it's showing this house. The listing agent calls and said, I don't know what you were thinking, but after your showing, that cat came into the house and beat the crap out of my owner's cats. And I can't believe you did that. And I'm like, dude, I didn't know it. I just thought it was the cat. You have signs all over the place. There's a sign in the screen and porch, a sign in the back door. <laughs> Don't let the cats out. How did I know? Put a tag on the cats. Turns out that old, that, that ornery outside cat never was allowed in anybody's house. It was he, just a, a stray or something. He was looking in the windows and he was jealous. He got to the point over time as he was downright mad at those cats in that house. Oh, yeah. They're just showing off their big, big poofy cat beds. So he came and in he, and kicked their butts. He was just waiting for the opportunity. <laughs> so listing to, agents... Yeah. Maybe put a picture of the cats that you want to keep in the house. Or put the cats that are in the house Away. in a crate. Yes. Or not have cats in the house at all during showings. More right. proof that we actually sold real estate. Hey, how about that? <laughs> okay. Only a couple more here. All right. So we're in fourth quarter. Send your holiday cards early. Be the first to send yours. Consider Thanksgiving cards instead of Christmas to avoid being caught in all the holiday mail in December. Rent a picture booth. I've had clients do this. Rent a uh, photo booth or hire a photographer to shoot holiday card photos for people in your database. Now, you this are, does have a huge turnout. You're dancing around the words Christmas and holiday. It depends on your part of the country that you're living in. You guys know how that goes. Some people are triggered if Adjust you say Christmas. Adjust accordingly. Personally, we would only use the word Christmas no matter where we lived. Trigger away. That's, you know, there you go. But here's the moral of the story. The, rent a, a photographer. You can do a uh, picture with Santa type thing. This is another type thing you can do. You could uh, let your mind go with that one, right? You're going to get a Santa. God forbid you're the actual Santa. And then you're going to have the local, the kids are going to have pictures taken with Santa. You could do all kinds of things like that. But yeah. you'd be shocked to see how many uh, Santas are essentially available for the seat, the for holidays. Hire. <laughs> and all they do is wait around all year, keep them their bodies looking Santa-like, keep that beard ready to you know ready to rumble. Yeah, it's true. And we actually the the 
<laughs> the guy that um, the the pastor who baptized baptized him. Zoe was also, and we actually originally met him because he was Zoe's original Santa. He was a great Santa. He was. And he lives for it. I have another friend from one of my music organizations, Carl in Indiana that we've stayed friends. He lives to be Santa. I mean, he even actually sends videos to Zoe, you know, checking that she's on the oh, right yeah. list. Okay. <laughs> so there are professional Santas out there. I'm thinking about, for example, John Walkinshop in Canada. He does a great Christmas event. He actually does it as a Christmas tree farm and does lots of these ideas. It gets lots of press, has a huge turnout. But, you know, I, I should preface my previous statement. If you're in a, like one of the communities that Julie and I sold a lot of real estate in, were, I would say, 90% Jewish people, and Julie and I are Christians. Sure. So obviously when we're giving gifts in that community, we're going to be sensitive to the fact that, you know, uh, you that... You could do a New Year's booth, right? Exactly. You can well, just modify But the it. wrapping paper doesn't necessarily have to have Christian uh, iconography on it. It can have just seasonal, you know, that Safe type of thing. Safe things would be snowflakes and snowmen and things like that. Right. You know, so adjust accordingly. All right, last but not least, play the yes game when any anyone invites you to their fourth quarter parties and events. This means that you say yes to everything, virtually everything. Even if you might not feel like going, it's a great way to meet new people, add people to your center of influence, talk about real estate, and connect with your friends. And we've done a lot of podcasts and obviously a lot of coaching and training about how to essentially work parties so you're not that guy or that gal that yes. everyone wants to avoid. Um, you know, it, it, but the point here is say yes to every, you know, it's funny, the yes game is always hitting us up for one of those soon, yes. but the yes game is going to put, force you in a position where you're going to be doing more social things than many of you would like because you're keyboard jockeys and so used to hiding behind your computer. Well, this is the time of year where you're going to make a commitment. You know, if it's fourth quarter and it's around the holidays, that's the time of year when you're going to make a commitment to go out and meet a lot of people. Now that can, uh, obviously apply to any type of time of the year. Get involved in anything that uh, that you get invited to do, and you'll be shocked and surprised. Even if you're the world's biggest dorkiest introvert, uh, introvert like by the way, Julie and I are introverts mm -hmm. for sure. But even if that is your self-described uh, or you know even prescribed introvert, you still will feel wonderful having actually been around other people. It's because you know that's how all of us are wired. So. Don't hide away during any time of the year, especially in fourth quarter. Well, and if you, especially if you are conversationally awkward or socially awkward, you've got to get yourself out there and get better at that. Have these conversations, have fun with it. You'll feel so much better and so much more confident when you do this repeatedly. I had a last thought here. When you do make more contact consistently, you'll get more, you get, you know, more and more every year you're consistent. Remember that your friends and clients have their own centers of influence that you can work with it will get easier. And we've said this on all three of this series podcast. There was one thing that we would change looking back. We would do more of this more frequently in more different areas. Well, absolutely. Because every single top producing agent, all of our top flight um, agents, the ones that are, you know, been with us the longest, um, they all get their, a majority of their business from the source. Absolutely. One thing that we didn't talk about, I'll just add this one little thing on the end. You can do smaller events. I'm thinking about somebody like Tammy Irby. She does about once a month, she's doing these dinner parties where she's connecting people who are in her center of influence. Every Everyone is a little bit diff different mix. Some are past clients. She has like 12 to 15 people over. There's a theme to the dinner party. That's a great okay? idea. Sometimes it's tacos. Sometimes it's something else. They make a meal together. They sit down and they break bread together. And they talk about, you know, of course, real estate's going to come up. But they talk about what are their kids doing? What are they doing for vacation? What are they looking forward to? It's just a nice little mini event. We know people here in our community you know, that, going do to one on Thursday. that do that on a regular basis. They'll yeah, have, and it's great. It is great. And it's they're, they intentionally, uh, I think they mix it up. They mm -hmm. obviously are always seeking uh, new neighbors that they can invite so the new neighbors can be thrown in the deep end and get to know the rest of us who have been yes. here a long time. But that's kind of the, the essence of... Really, the, you guys get the, the overarching theme here. The overarching theme is you're actually going to go out of your way to uh, be in direct communication with other people and do it from a place of contribution. Nowhere in anything did we ask you to be oh, you know, overly direct and no. uh, kind of sketch and gross about asking for real estate referrals. Because when they get to know you personally, the fact that you're a real estate agent and the fact that they'll then want to do business with you or send you a, a referral, that just is what organically happens next. Those of you who believe that you can brand, market, and advertise your way to have the same levels of success from agents that are really masterful at doing this type of thing, you're going to waste tons of time and potentially millions of dollars trying to get what you could accomplish inside, you know, really 100%. six months from just being yourself 
uh, around other people that have shared interests as you. And then yes, a real estate's naturally going to come up every single time. Everybody, doesn't matter what price point they're in, everybody wants to talk about real estate. That's right. And remember, I'll take us back to when we started this series about repeat and referral business, how to get more from your database. What was our number one point? When you look at that beautiful listing and you say, how did that agent get that listing? I, maybe I haven't even heard of them. How did they get that? Gosh, I wish I had that kind of business. It's because the seller knew them. You've got to be the person that they know. There you That's go. it. So guys, go back and listen to the first two podcasts we've done in this series. If you love this podcast, which we know you do, you won't believe the value you get with Premier Coaching, and we have made it free for you to join. Just go to premiercoaching.com or scroll down. Look at all of our show notes. We're just reading from our notes. And then click the link that leads in that leads uh, the notes and join Premier Coaching. It's all there waiting for you. What are you waiting for? This and every other time of year is the perfect time of year for you to be in alignment with your highest and truest purpose, which is being of service to other people. It is our truest and heartfelt intent to be in, in service to all of you. And that's the reason we do this podcast every day. And that's one of the principal drivers in us, um, frankly, allowing you guys to join Premier Coaching for free. So go ahead and join Premier Coaching right now. The link is in the show description. In the meantime, thank you for keeping this number one lesson to daily podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. Have a fantastic Hello, day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. Video, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. And don't forget to hit that like button. Leave your comments and questions below and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're going to love that one.